20 strange things that only exist in New Zealand. As the filming location for the famous series The Hobbit, the birthplace of bungee jumping, a country where people prefer to walk barefoot rather than wearing shoes, that's New Zealand the last country to be settled in the world. Join me in exploring New Zealand, a fascinating country with lush green forests, vast landscapes and extremely friendly people. You're sure to be amazed when you hear these interesting facts about New Zealand in the following moments. Number 20. No snakes in New Zealand. Is anyone here afraid of snakes like I am? If you're scared of snakes, leave a comment. Because I need to form a team of snake fearers to move to New Zealand right away. New Zealand doesn't have any native snake species because the region was geographically isolated for millions of years before human settlement. This isolation prevented snakes from reaching the islands. Additionally, the climate and environment of New Zealand are not suitable for most snake species. The neighboring country, Australia, has many snake species, both venomous and non-venomous, but none of them have slithered over to New Zealand. Quite fascinating, isn't it? Although New Zealand doesn't have any land snakes, occasionally sea snakes with yellow bellies visit. These snakes live in salt water and swim from far away to the New Zealand coast. Despite being small, both are venomous and can pose a threat to local wildlife and humans. However, New Zealanders have only spotted this snake species 35 times since 1930. Number 19. Maui, the world's smallest dolphin. The exclusive habitat of the smallest and rarest dolphin in the world, the Maui's dolphin, is off the west coast of New Zealand. Maui's dolphins have a lifespan of 20 years, and they only start reproducing at the age of 7. A fully grown Maui's dolphin measures 1.7 meters, and throughout their lives they mate only 7 times, averaging once every 3 years. This species is facing the risk of extinction primarily due to human-induced threats, especially from fishing activities, specifically the nets used by fishermen. Number 18. Maori people, indigenous people of New Zealand. As the first people to explore and settle in New Zealand, it's not surprising that the Maori people make up 15.1% of the total population. Alongside English, the Maori language is widely used in New Zealand. Facial tattoos are one of the distinctive features of the Maori people. These tattoos are traditionally done with sharp bone chisels, shark teeth or stones. They believe these tattoos make men appear stronger and fiercer in battles and more attractive to women. The Maori people have a unique traditional greeting called Hongi which involves pressing noses together and concluding with a handshake. This gesture symbolizes sharing each other's breath of life. Clothing is also a significant aspect of Maori culture, primarily made from plants, bird feathers and various animal hides. Typically, women wear long dresses made from animal hides, while men wear cloaks with loincloths or leather skirts. Particularly, the cloaks of the men are often made from bird feathers and are sleeveless. To prepare the materials and complete the sewing process for a cloak, it may take several months. Do you find the indigenous Maori people of New Zealand interesting? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 17. The last country to be inhabited by humans. Archaeologists have determined the date when humans first settled in New Zealand, approximately 750 years ago. This makes New Zealand the last country to be inhabited by humans. The settlers came from the Polynesian region of the South Pacific, known as the Maori people. Polynesians were renowned seafarers who specialized in exploring new lands. Number 16. The steepest street in the world. Located in the suburbs of the city of Dunedin in southern New Zealand, Baldwin Street is recognized as the steepest street in the world. The straight road is about 350 meters long, running eastward from the Lindsay Creek Valley up to the slope of Signal Hill. At its steepest point, the incline of Baldwin Street is approximately 19 degrees. This means that for every 2.86 meters horizontally, the road ascends 1 meter vertically. Today, the residents of Baldwin Street, as well as the people of Dunedin in general, take pride in the street's reputation. Every summer, typically in February, races are organized from the bottom to the top and back down. This event attracts 1,000 participants annually. 
I wonder how the residents of the houses along this steep street feel. Share your thoughts in the comments. Number 15. The Land of Kiwi. Why do people use the term Kiwi when referring to New Zealand? Well, it coincidentally is the name of a fruit grown here, as well as the name of a bird native to the country and an affectionate nickname for the people. The Kiwi bird is most common in New Zealand because it is a flightless bird native to the country. This running bird with a long beak and soft feathers has become a national symbol of New Zealand. There are five species of Kiwi birds, including the Great Spotted Kiwi, Little Spotted Kiwi, Rowi Tokeika, and Hast Tokeika. Each species differs in size, color, and habitat. However, all are currently threatened by habitat destruction, predation, and competition from introduced species, making Kiwi bird conservation a top priority in New Zealand. Number 14. People prefer to go barefoot. The people of this country believe that going barefoot is good for health because it brings them closer to nature. Therefore, you can comfortably walk barefoot on the grass when you come here. Moreover, the barefoot culture here is impressive because it fosters a sense of closeness among people. The streets are clean and safe, making barefoot walking quite enjoyable. You'll see bare feet outside on the streets, in parks, supermarkets and cafes, making you want to kick off your bulky shoes right away. Number 13. The first country to recognize women's voting rights. Among the current independent countries, New Zealand was the first to recognize women's voting rights in 1893, when it was a self-governing colony of Britain. Since then, the country has had three female prime ministers, Jenny Shipley, Helen Clark, and Jacinda Ardern. It's truly a progressive country, isn't it? Share your thoughts in the comments. Number 12. The hill with the longest name in the world. The hill's name is Tomatawakatang. Actually, I can't read its full name. In short, Tomata is the name of a hill that stands 305 meters tall, boasting the longest name in the world with numerous letters. The name Tomata has been around for centuries before Maori explorer Tamatea discovered the hill. It has been passed down from generation to generation and mentioned in several songs. Tomata Hill is located near Parangahau District, south of Waipukuro Town in Hawke's Bay, New Zealand, becoming a famous attraction for tourists. Reading the longest geographical name in the world is challenging, and memorizing it is even more difficult. If anyone can read this name, please let me know in the comments because I find it quite challenging. Number 11. Auckland, the city of sales. Although not the capital of New Zealand, Auckland is the largest and most culturally diverse city in the country. Auckland was formed from ancient volcanic eruptions and is surrounded by the Manukau and Waitemata harbors, making it a dreamy harbor city. Situated on a small strip of land in the central Auckland area, bordered by the Tasman Sea to the west and Horaki Gulf to the east, it's easy to understand why Auckland has easy access to the sea. There are several cargo and commercial ports as well as many yacht marinas in the city. Thanks to the numerous yacht marinas, the city has earned the characteristic name City of Sails. With over 500,000 sailboats and yachts of various sizes moored at the marinas, no matter which direction you approach Auckland, you'll easily spot long rows of sailboats. Every January, Auckland hosts the annual Auckland Anniversary Day Regatta. Thousands of sailboats gather at the port and the surrounding waters to participate. Seeing this scene makes you want to visit Auckland to witness it firsthand, doesn't it? If you've had the chance to visit this beautiful city, please comment. Number 10. Celebrating Christmas in Summer. When you think of Christmas, you probably envision white snow, cozy fireplaces, and warm indoor celebrations. However, Christmas in New Zealand is during the peak of summer. As the summer season runs from December to February, instead of cozy indoor gatherings, New Zealanders celebrate Christmas with extravagant outdoor parties, warm camping trips, live bands and nationwide festive dances. During Christmas in New Zealand, the Pahutukawa trees burst into vibrant red blooms. Some say that if you see the trees flowering in early December, you'll have a radiant summer. 
According to Maori tradition, these flowers symbolize love for the land and its people. Number 9. The first legal wizard in New Zealand. Ian Brackenbury Channel, an 88-year-old man, is perhaps the only wizard in the world officially appointed by the government. Holding a contracted position with a yearly salary of $11,300, Brackenbury has been the official wizard for the city of Christchurch in New Zealand since 1998. In his 23 years of service, he has received a total of $260,000 for his magical duties. In 1988, while still a street performer, Channel received a surprising invitation to perform a rain dance from the organizers of the Waymate Fair. The town of Waymate was suffering from a drought at the time. A turning point occurred when just a few hours after Channel completed his rain dance, a heavy rain shower arrived. Since then, Brackenbury has performed rain invoking rituals like dancing in the rain during dry seasons. Channel admits that he doesn't know any real magic. His role in the city is to bring a sense of joy to people, sometimes satirizing societal flaws. Number 8. More sheep than human. In New Zealand, whether in the plains or the foothills, you'll see images of men riding horses leisurely herding flocks of sheep back to the farm. Currently, there are over 46 million sheep estimated in New Zealand, averaging five sheep per person. Each flock consists of around 10,000 sheep, with the Romney breed being the most popular due to their high reproductive productivity, quality meat, and wool. Thanks to this, New Zealand produces up to 11% of the world's total wool production and is the world's largest producer of sheep wool fiber. When talking about sheep, people also recall the skilled shearers that locals often call Kiwi shearers. Currently, around 2,000 shearers are working in various regions of New Zealand. With a 20 centimeter long wool, they skillfully shear a thin layer in one go. Every six months, the wool grows back thick and without shearing, sheep can become quite uncomfortable. One sheep yields approximately five kilograms of wool per year. What do you think about herding sheep here? Share your thoughts in the comments. Number seven, setting of the Hobbit in the Lord of the Rings series. Is anyone here a fan of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit movies? If so, let me know in the comments because I'm also a big fan of these film series. Real life Hobbiton is not located in the Shire of Middle Earth, but is situated in the town of Matamata, Waikato, New Zealand. This place serves as the primary setting for the Hobbit village in both the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit series. This location is a privately owned 1,250 acre sheep farm that the film crew rented for filming in 1998, and it has become a famous tourist destination to this day. The scenery in Hobbiton is incredibly beautiful, with vast spaces, cool weather, long stretches of green grass, and picturesque hills. In the distance, you can also see many adorable white sheep grazing, creating a scene like another world. To capture these stunning shots, the film crew invested up to $500 million in building the Hobbit houses. Officially opened in 2012, Hobbiton quickly became a popular tourist spot, attracting hundreds of visitors daily. Looking at such a dreamy landscape, would you like to visit this place? Number 6. Unique Flora and Fauna New Zealand, with its lush and diverse landscapes, is home to many rare and unique wildlife species. In addition to the iconic kiwi bird I introduced earlier, there's the Chuatara lizard. This reptile has the longest egg incubation period among reptiles, lasting up to about 16 months. It's the last surviving member of an ancient order of reptiles that once thrived on Earth during the Jurassic period. The Kiwi parrot, the only alpine parrot globally, also resides here and can withstand the icy conditions of the Southern Alps. It's believed to have developed survival strategies during the last great ice age. Next is the fantail bird, one of the smallest and most agile birds in New Zealand. Lastly, the New Zealand sea lion is one of the rarest and most endangered sea lion species worldwide. Most of the New Zealand sea lions today are descendants of a single female reintroduced in 1993 after being absent from the country for 100 years. Number five, three official languages. Besides English and sign language, Maori is also an official language in New Zealand. 
17% of the country's population are indigenous Maori people, and although the language has faced near extinction, they strive to preserve it. If you're visiting New Zealand and want to learn more about this fascinating culture and the unique Maori language, a visit to Rotorua is an excellent choice. Number 4. Birthplace of Bungee Jumping Are any of you watching enthusiasts of adventurous activities like bungee jumping? If you are, let me know in the comments because this fact is bound to surprise you. New Zealand is the birthplace of numerous extreme sports, including bungee jumping. Bungee jumping is one of the riskiest extreme sports globally. Participants are tethered by an elastic cord and then jump from a fixed point at a great height. The origins of this activity can be traced back to the city of Queenstown on the South Island of New Zealand. In New Zealand, you can find various bungee jumping platforms, from the top of TV towers to bridges suspended between two mountains or simply a platform over a deep water lake. Apart from bungee jumping, Queenstown is also the origin of many other adventure sports, such as jet boating, snowboarding, skydiving, and paragliding. Number 3. Stargazing underground in New Zealand. Have you ever seen an entire sky full of stars beneath the ground? Visit the Waitamo Glowworm Caves in the land of Kiwis, and you'll be mesmerized by a sky filled with bioluminescent glowworms just below the surface. The Waitomo Glowworm Caves are located in the town of Waitomo in New Zealand, forming part of a system of three caves Waitomo, Rukuri, and Aranui. These caves were first discovered in 1887. Situated over 45 meters underground, the cave's unique structure and shape have been shaped by natural forces over time. The Waitomo Caves are home to hundreds of glowworms, scientifically known as Arachnocampa luminosa, emitting a glow that blends blue and a hint of green. This color is produced as a result of a chemical reaction in their tails reacting with oxygen. Thousands of these glowworms light up the Waitomo Glowworm Cave, creating a mystical atmosphere resembling a starry night. A surreal world unfolds with the strangely beautiful glow emitted by these tiny glowworms, captivating observers with their enchanting lights. This unique experience offers a sense of satisfaction, touching on the sublime as you gaze upon the luminous streaks of light. It can leave you entranced in the mesmerizing scenery, akin to a celestial world gifted by nature that is hard to escape from. If you find this fascinating, make sure to visit this place at least once in your life. Number 2. World's Purest Freshwater Lake Rotomera Nua, also known as Blue Lake or Lake Rotomera Nuene, is situated within the Nelson Lakes National Park in New Zealand and is recognized as the world's purest freshwater lake. In 2011, the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research in New Zealand conducted scientific tests and concluded that Blue Lake is the clearest natural freshwater lake known to humans. According to tradition, the Māori indigenous people use the water from Blue Lake to cleanse the bones of deceased men within their tribe. The bones of women are traditionally cleaned in nearby Lake Constance. The farewell ceremonies for departed souls are conducted along a sacred path from Blue Lake, traversing a route that leads to the farewell spit. Number 1. First person to conquer Everest was a New Zealander. Edmund Hillary is recognized as the first person to reach the summit of Mount Everest, the world's highest peak. Edmund Hillary was born on July 19, 1919, and grew up in Tuakau, a small town about 50 kilometers south of Auckland, New Zealand. He chose to begin his mountaineering career by conquering domestic peaks and became a renowned ice climber. Edmund Hillary's Everest expedition took place in 1953. At the moment he stood on the top of the world, Surrounded by the majestic snow-capped peaks of the Himalayas, glaciers extended below, resembling veins of blood cutting across the earth and snow rivers intertwined with ice rivers. To the east were the impressive peaks of Lahots, Makalu and Kanchenjunga, while to the west lay Cho Oyu and the unexplored peaks yet to be discovered. Following his historic achievement, Edmund Hillary continued to conquer 10 other peaks in the Himalayas. So we've explored 20 fascinating facts about New Zealand. Which fact impressed you the most? Personally, I like the one about the longest named hill because I can't even read the full name. 
Remember to comment on your favorite fact. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on our latest videos. See you in the next ones.